There's three of them out there. They say they're on both sides. Yeah, they're all over the place now. We're in a pod. Come on up. No, I missed that. No, not usually. They, they swim in schools of their own kind. Oh, there. There's one up dead yeah, ahead. Yeah, I saw that one after the fact. for this. It's typical. Any estimate how many you think there are? 20, 30? Sliding down. <laughs> She's got competition. Good thing is separate groups. So there's two groups that we talk about: the Procidae or true seals, which you see here. They also, characteristically, most eared seals will have a very thick fur like you see on the southern fur seal here. Because of this thick fur, they really don't need to have the thick layer of blubber we usually associate with seals. So they have a considerably thinner layer of blubber than what we would expect in most seals. Oh, I've gotten ahead of myself. The true seals are, as you can see here, kind of torpedo shaped. They cannot raise up on their front flippers. They do not swivel their hind. There are no external ears. They're not nearly as fast as the eared seals. You heard today when they told you that you don't want to get real close to the southern furs because they are quite fast being able to run pretty much like a dog on land. These guys move kind of like a caterpillar, inchworming along on land. So skip that again. They have a very high risk of getting the bends when they're diving, just like we do. So they exhale on the ice, they never breathe in the water. The females generally 
give birth to the pup. In most species, they will wait till the pup is weaned, and then they will mate. And this seems kind of backwards in a way, but they actually come ashore pregnant, give birth, make, wait till the pup is independent, and then they mate. And they have a thing called delayed implantation. They'll mate, the sperm will fertilize the egg, but the egg doesn't move to the uterus right off. It actually stays and waits in a special area, hangs out for a couple of months, and then it moves to the uterus where it's implanted, like when we think of your regular pregnancy, and they go on with their gestation. It's a situation that they've got set up, and all, all seals do this. The primary predator on seals are orcas, killer whales, which are not whales at all, they are dolphins, and leopard seals, which you see here. These are the primary predators on all seals. Unfortunately, until recently, man was the greatest predator on seals. You heard our true Antarctic seals. These are the leopard seal that we just saw, the crab eater seal, which we see here, the Weddell sea seal we see here. I call it Weddell, some people say Weddell. Both correct pronunciations are acceptable. group of non-breeding seals. These rather long flippers here, if they get overheated with this nice thick fur on a nice day and for some reason don't want to go into the water, they can radiate heat out of these flippers much like the penguins can, like I explained yesterday. So if they're cold, what do they do with these flippers that can radiate heat? They just tuck them right back in underneath them, much like the penguins cover their heads in underneath their arms, or underneath the flippers, pardon me. Um, to keep from being cold. These guys feed also on krill, but they feed predominantly, well, predominantly on krill. They also feed on fish and to a lesser extent on penguins. He's flapping his flipper trying to get away, but his head is entirely inside the mouth of that southern fur seal. I don't know if you can see that, make that out too well. It's quite apparent right up here next to the screen though. He did, in fact, let them go, but oftentimes they will kill them, but just from playing. They have found in their feast, there, there's several studies going on, diet studies going on on these animals. Unlike penguins, you obviously can't catch them and be pushing the guts out of them to see what they ate. <laughs> they, in fact, will collect the feces of these because they do um, defecate quite. Some estimates say 15 million. No one's exactly sure. The crab eater seal, we believe it's got its name by an incorrect translation of Norwegian. These do not feed on crabs, they feed on crustaceans, but people, which crabs are in the crustacea group, certainly. But when someone translated, they believe they translated it incorrectly to where it was crabs, so they got the name crab eater. You'll notice that they have a much longer snout than some of the other seals that we'll be looking at, and they have kind of a like a happy smile on their face when their mouth is closed. They do in fact have some nice hefty, hefty teeth to them and they also have these nice muscles that contract. This is fairly common when you see a seal that's hot. They will foam through the nose like that. Why they do it exactly, I don't know, but it is very common to see when seals are dried out, their fur is no longer wet, and they're sitting up on land. I don't know if they actually have a cold, and maybe that's why they're sitting up on land. I think that's maybe anthropomorphizing a little bit, but they do, in fact, do make this foam. Not just these, but what else and other seals as well. And this, once again, is a crab eater. such a fat seal in general. <clears throat> These seals are named after the early explorer that the Waddell seal is, sea is also named after. Make sure we get everything here. There's a gentleman who works on the giant Antarctic cod in McMurdo Sound. He's been working there for 